there's no hell and all it is is heaven and we're already in heaven I don't guess there's no bad people and uh, but uh, they need Jesus amen, amen. And, uh, so uh, I hope that uh, something can happen there and if, even if you start one service a week that's better than nothing amen, yes. amen. and let them start getting the gospel and see how it works and then Go from there. Matthew chapter 6, when you get your place and will and you able, stand for the reading of the Word of God again. Verses 19, the Bible says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasures is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Lord, I pray just for a little bit. God, I pray, Lord, that I'll be able to have the words to say. I pray that you would lead, guide, and direct. And, Lord, I just pray that your will be done tonight in our hearts and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be amen. seated. Verses 23, 21 says, For where your treasures are, there will your heart be also. Amen. Now, I want to say, we're living in a time, and in, in the last two years, now, this has been going on for a long time. You know, it's just more noticeable right now because you see what's going on. But a lot of people's got a lot of treasures today because of the government giving them all this money. That's right. Yes, amen. Amen? I did get, I did get three, two of those stimulus checks. I, I don't think I got three of them, but I think I got two of them. And I tried to use somewhat of that on missions. You say, why? People need the Lord. Amen. amen. But where is your heart tonight? That's what I want to talk about, about our heart. Because Jeremiah says that our heart is wicked and desperately wicked. Amen? Yes, yes. You know, you go over to Revelations and you start reading about the churches and the seven churches there. And you go down through them. And there was a lot of people in those churches that was doing right, but for the wrong reasons. And, you know, being in church, you know, here's the thing. Uh, having a missions conference, uh, even having a day like today, let me just let you know something. Hey, I am glad to see the excitement. I hope it stays around. But remember, the devil's here. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And you know what? Here's the thing, because I do a lot of traveling. And, you know, y'all come, y'all drive just a little distance to come to church. Driving over there and back, once even once a week, you know what's going. You know what the devil's going to say. Do you not know how much gas is? Amen. 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 Right. And then the flesh is going to say, you know what? I've worked all day. I'm not sure I can go tonight. Amen. 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 Am I making sense? Yes, yes sir. And so when I'm preaching tonight, and even this week when I preach. You may not need this today. You may be on fire today. You may be at the top of the world. You may be even be on cloud nine. But just remember one thing. Cloud, cloud two is coming back. Yes. You're right. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Because why is that? Well, we have the devil. We have the flesh. We have the world. Amen. Amen. And that works on people pretty rough. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's the reason. Listen, as far as biblically going in and telling you that we need to have service at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and 11 o'clock uh, for the morning worship and come back for the 6 o'clock service and have a midweek service. I'm not sure that I could scripturally tell you that all of that is biblical, but I am going to tell you I wouldn't complain too much about four services a week because when Apostle Paul showed up, he said, where's the temple? Where's the tabernacle? We're having church. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, Amen. Amen. But if we get tired. We get weary. I know that. You say, why is that? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I've only been here for uh, three days, and I'm going to tell you right now. I feel like I have done about three weeks worth of work. Amen. Amen. But if you, but you know what? It's worth it. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you came back tonight. Listen, Amen. hey, walking today, I have walked. Listen, hey, my phone tells me I have done over 10,000 steps. Amen. I'll be, I, listen, when I lay my head on the pillow tonight, won't nobody have to give me a sleeping pill. I'll sleep real good. <laughs> but what about your heart? Where is your heart tonight? Amen. Where is it? Because, listen, hey, and it can be one place today and tomorrow will be different. You're right. right. It, it changes. You say, why is that? We in an ever-changing world. That's right. And our heart, well, listen, that's the reason.
reason we got to have daily Bible reading. That's the reason we got to have daily uh, pray, praying. Amen. That's the reason we got to crucify this flesh daily. You say, why? Because it's weak. Amen. You know, the preacher asked one of the ladies in, uh, about what the which Bible, uh, what part of the Bible she liked, and she liked Proverbs. I'm surprised. Amen. I'm very surprised. Somebody's calling me. It'll be all right. That kid, that me later. But you say, why? I don't always like Proverbs. I read a Proverbs every morning. Now, I know some of y'all spiritual than I am, and you like every part of the Bible. Amen. <laughs> I don't like Proverbs. You say, why? It tells me how weak it I am. Amen. 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 Yep. If I'm not tell, it doing right, amen, you say, what does it do? It tells me how bad I am. That's right. Amen. And that's other parts of the book Bible too, but what about your heart? How weak it is it? How good is it? How do you how do you think you rate? Whenever if you want to do a survey of your heart, what would the Lord say? Amen. Amen. What would the Lord say? Go to Genesis chapter 12 real quick like. Genesis chapter 12. And look in verses 1. And y'all turn in pages. Don't get me swallowed up water. That's good. I, I like hearing pages when I turn. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed out of the as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haram. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had got, gotten or inherit. And they went forth to to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. I want to say, how about your heart? When, it, when, when the Lord tells you to sell out. Yeah. Amen. See, he, whenever you read about Abraham here, he told Abram, he said, listen, get your stuff packed, get on your donkey, get, get, in, get your family loaded up and whatever. And he said, I'm not telling you where to go. I'm just going to give you some directions until I get you where you're going. Now, I think about whenever the Lord started working on my heart about traveling. I, you know, I, listen, I knew where I was going. If I'd have told my wife, listen, hey, pack your bags, get your stuff clothed up, put your stuff, put the stuff that we're not taking in the storage building, and we're getting in a vehicle, I have no idea where we're going. We're just going to go and drive until the Lord tells me to stop. But that's what that's what Abram did. Now, what he don't say whether well, Sarah got a little upset with him or whether whatever, but it, she she was with him. Amen. Amen. What about selling that to God? See, I want to, and listen, and, and, and I, I'm not preaching that you have to sell out and leave Superior because Superior needs somebody to sell out to the right here. Amen. Yes, yes, sir. But you know, I got to thinking and the Lord started working on my heart, started dealing with my heart, and he said, you need to go on the road into full-time evangelism and take your family. Amen. You say, what would you do? Well, I prayed for at least three months to make sure it was God and not Gary. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, where it says count the cost, make sure it's God's perfect will. Amen. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all up here in Montana's never done this, but I've got ahead of God before. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. And it just don't it don't work out too good. Yeah. When God's back there and you up there thinking you know what you're doing. Amen. You know, here's what happens. Here's what we call it in North Carolina. You flop. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to say something to you. Hey, we need some people to sell out. Amen. Yes, sir. You know what? Some of you couldn't go today, but I hope you prayed. Amen. Maybe some of you just need to sell out and say, Lord, you know where I'm at. You know the condition of my life. You know what's going on. Lord, just help me to be that one. Amen? Yes, amen. <laughs> I had a guy tell me, I met him up in uh, Indiana here, actually Indiana, Illinois, line there, and he come to church over in Illinois, and I met him, and he told me the first time I met him, he said, Brother Hawkins, you are going to be on my prayer list. I'm going to be your prayer warrior. 
I guess it was about three years ago I seen him. I think it was last year he passed away. And about three years ago I seen him, and he just, I mean, listen, he used to be in evangelism. He used to pastor. He used to preach. And here he is, 80-some years old, and he says, I'm sitting here. My wife has to do everything for me. I can't do nothing, and I'm just sitting here, and I'm wondering why in the world God still got me here. Amen. And I looked at him and I said, Brother, you remember you told me you'd be one of my prayer warriors. And I think God's got to have you here to keep me going. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, he's passed away since last year or whatever, but I'm going to say something to you. Maybe some of you just sell out to pray. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you, prayer will change some things. They pray. Listen, hey, you go and start a church, but before you get the church started, I hope that some of you's already prayed and yeah. said, Lord, we need you to go before us. Amen. Yes, sir. You say, why? It's the Lord's word. Amen. But selling out for Jesus Christ, listen, hey, as I said someone at last night, just give him all of yourself. Amen. 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 You already bought with a price. Amen. Not supposed to just let him have you. You know, Abraham here, listen, hey, Abraham was just a man. Amen. And Abraham sold out. Listen, hey, I'm not, thank God I got a few horses, but they're underneath the hood. Amen. Amen. We thought we was going to have to have some more horses to get that van back up some of them hills today in the church van. Amen. Amen. You know what? Sell out. Maybe some of you can't do a whole lot, but you know what? Everybody's got one of them smartphones. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know what you do with that smartphone? Advertise Jesus. Amen. I'm sure you got numbers in there. You know what you do? You can, you know what I do every Saturday? And I'm not bragging on me. I'm not listening. Hey, it ain't because of me. But every Saturday night, somewhere throughout the day of Saturday, I text a lot of preachers. I don't know, probably 200 preachers or whatever, and say, I'm praying for. Amen. 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 You say, why? People need prayer. Yes. You don't know what people's going through. I get texts back now. I really don't. I don't. Uh, after I have sent my thing for Saturday because I travel and I text and I got to get ready for Sunday. So I don't do a lot of responding or whatever back. But I get things. So, brother, you just don't know. But I needed that this week. I needed you to pray for me this week. I needed those prayers. I get texts back from up a guy in Indiana I preached for last year. And every once in a while, I'll say, he'll say, brother, those prayers are going through. They're working. People are getting saved. The church is growing. Amen. 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 You can do that. Yes, sir. There's a song out there. I don't know who come up with a song, but I like it. Everybody can pray. Amen. Everybody can take that phone and listen. Hey. I, I, I watch people 70 some years old text. Yeah. Don't look too good to me, but hey. My, my dad, I text my dad, which is my pastor as well, but I text him every Saturday night, and I know there's no response coming back from him. He don't even know what end of the phone you're supposed to use most of the time. Amen. But we can use that phone to encourage people. Amen. Just something that we can do to for God to encourage people. Do you know how many people in America that's in the work of the Lord that need somebody to pray for? Amen. Yes. Do you know how many battles that people are facing day after day after day? Hey, the devil's after us. Amen. 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 We need to be encouraged. Yes. He said, I'll take care of somebody. Amen. No. I have now I listen, hey, it humbles me. But ever since I have let people know about my wife, I have, I, I mean, the response that I get, I get texts back every Sunday, sometime during Sunday, we pray for your wife today. Amen. And I think, why would somebody want to do that for me? You say, why? They want to be in the church. Amen. And, 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 and they pray it for us because we've not been separated like this in a long time. My daddy asked me the other day, he says, uh, he said, you're going to be able to make this? I said, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to do my best. I have no problem this week. Listen, hey, Brother Junior ain't planning on giving. He takes me to this place, and I know why he's doing this to me. He's jealous. So he's got to keep me away from the cabin so he won't be jealous. <laughs> Amen. You know what? We need to be in here. Amen. Because the devil wants us out of church tonight. Yes, sir. Am I making sense tonight? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, hey, where's your heart at? Is it sold out to God? Amen. Go to 1 Samuel real quick. Like. 1 Samuel chapter 16. 
First chapter, Samuel chapter 16, look in verses 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on this countenance or on this height of his stature, because I have, refu I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not the man, the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Don't ask you tonight, hey, what would the Lord say about you tonight with your heart? Amen. See, I can't see your heart. Amen. But God can. Amen. I'm going to ask you this. We'll go a little bit further. We do a survey. We're going to go right back to where we go to Hot Springs. We go right back to Hot Springs. And we go and we talk to those people. What would they say about you? People looking at you every day of your life. Amen. Amen. They're watching it. Listen, hey, they're wondering. People in this town are driving around and saying, they're there every day this week. What are they doing? Amen. We need to listen. Hey, it, it is that God looks on the inward, but man looks on the outward. Yes, sir. You know what that means is? We are the shining light, and people need to see Jesus. Amen? Amen. And that's the way we dress, the way we act. Amen? Yes, Amen. The way we talk. Yeah, that's right. See, I'm going to tell you the reason a lot of people have the outward problem is because they've never had the inward fixed. Amen. 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 See, you know what? This is called nature. We're riding down the road, but you ain't got to worry about that now. We did, we, 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 if, we'd have got a, if we'd have got a ticket to do with a day, it would have been a ticket for going too slow. <coughs> brother Larry said that. We can go faster than you're going, brother. <laughs> The speed limit's 80 around here. <laughs> you know what? I've noticed that people's got more of a fear for police officers than they do God. Amen. You're right. I'm not saying disrespect police officers. Listen, hey, I'm not for I'm not for this defunding police. No. no. I'm not for it. I'm, I, matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you right now, my brother, I, my wife was telling me whenever she went to our home church and my brother was talking and he's he's in the part of possibly going to work and being a police officer. Thank God we need some good ones. Amen? Amen. I wouldn't do it. You say, why? The weakness is going on out there. Amen? Amen. I understand the way they the way they walk up and act and different things, but we got more fear of uh we got more fear of our mom and daddy than we do of God. Amen. 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 Yep. What about your heart? What would God say about you? If listen, hey, I want to ask you a question. Would you want everybody to know on your screen what you're thinking? Amen. Because see, here's what happens. You go to thinking and you get to that, and what's in the heart, you know where it comes from? The mouth and the mind. That's where it starts. And then it gets down in that heart, and then it gets worse. Amen. Amen? But you're thinking about it a whole lot more before you do it than you ever do it. Yes, sir. I'm just saying, listen, hey, we need to keep ourselves clean. Amen. Before God. We need to stay clean before God because you say, why? Well, we stay up pretty wicked most of the time. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, I, I agree with the preacher on the part of the judgment. I think people preach it a little bit too easy. Yes, that's right. Amen. Because he's got a record book. That's what that song says. Amen. He's got a record book. He knows all about us. Amen. Yes, sir. But you know what? As I watched, I, and I ain't talking about the world. Listen, hey, the, the drunk in this town is doing what the drunk's supposed to do. He's being a drunk. Amen. But the people in this town that would say, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, which you got to be very careful and listen to me all the way. A Christian is Christ-like. Is that what it is? Think that right? Well, I'm going to tell you, I am always saved. I can't lose my salvation. I'm going to heaven, but sometimes I don't act like a Christian. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, you got some of the brethren out there, well, you shouldn't say this because you're holy in the sight of God. My inward man is. Yes, sir. My outward man. Amen. I'm an old sinner saved by grace. Amen. 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 This flesh did not get saved. It's still a sinner. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. But what would God and what would the people, what would the people say about Lighthouse Baptist Church? Amen. 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 
I know they I know they're going to talk. I mean, I understand that. But I'm just going to say something to you. When they're talking uh, like uh, you know, like to like, like the other day, I, thought, I don't know if I used that illustration. I used it here. I used it somewhere or whatever. But that woman running her mouth about God, I wouldn't want to. Talk, I would not want to stand before God after talking bad about a preacher. Amen. I would not want to meet my maker. And after I had started trouble and run the preacher down and said all kinds of bad things about him. Yes, sir. Your heart ain't too. Listen, God ain't, God ain't patting you on the back by doing that. Amen. God ain't blessing you by doing that. Amen. You're right. I'm just saying, listen, hey, we got to try to keep our heart clean. I know this would be a little bit more of negative, but I'm going to tell you something. If I, you know what we tried to do today is we talk to people. I'm trying to get them to think. Amen. You can say sweet nothings to them, and guess what? <laughs> Unless you're talking to your wife, and it should be your own wife. Amen. Amen. <laughs> They're not going to pay much attention to you. You got to get some of their attention. I mean, hey, people would say, I'm not interested. I'm this. I'm that. I'm the other. Why? Why would you not be interested in a loving God? Amen. Amen. You know why she made that statement today that a loving God would send you to hell? Because she's probably heard somebody else say it. Amen. Or right. people have been taught that. Listen, the loving God ain't put nobody in hell. You say, why? Because he died, he sent his son to die on the cross, shed his blood, so that we could have a gift and accept it. Amen. Amen. And a gift is not something you make somebody take. That's right. right. Amen. So we gotta we gotta keep our heart clean because of God and because of man. Amen. Because, see, whenever you say something about people's outward appearance, well, God looks on the inward man. <laughs> it makes me so stinking mad. Yeah, well, if you was right with God, you wouldn't look wicked on the outside. Amen. 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 Am I making sense? Yes. Amen. I'm just saying, hey, what about your heart? Go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Look in verses 16. And others tempting him sought him, uh, of him a sign from heaven, but he knowing their thoughts said unto them, Every kingdom divideth against itself is brought to the desolations, and a house divideth against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall Shall his kingdom stand because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon us. When a strong man's arm keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. How about this? What is, oh, that ain't what I was wanting to read. It was about the uh, rich young ruler having all the goods. Hmm. There it is again, right there in the wrong scriptures, but I want to say something to you. Give me just a second here. Chapter 12, verse 13. Yeah, let's, all right, let's do that. Let's get verse 16 here. And he spake a parable unto them and saying, the, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty of, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room for to bestow my fruit? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thou soul hath shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? And so it is that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. I want to ask you a question. What's important to you? Amen. Here's a guy that said, listen, man, i got it all. You know what? There's some people that have got money and people can allow, God can allow them to live there. Amen. I'm not one of these. But I want to say something to you. What is important to you? You know what's important to most people today since 2020 getting these checks? They're still getting checks. And they're just wasting their money? Yes, amen. 
and people are going to hell. Amen. I think about it once in a while. Why in the world would anybody want to waste money on the worldly good knowing they're not going to make you happy? Amen. There's nothing wrong with having things unless you put things in front of God. Yes. I went to one house, we went to one house today, and before I got in the, got in the driveway walking to the door, nice Corvette, nice trailer, but the house is going down. I don't know what it looked like on the inside. Do you know what was important to him? Cars. Amen. Listen, sometimes we put things in front of God. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay. Money, mm -hmm. material things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm going to say something to you. God said He would supply our needs, Amen. not our wants. Amen. Amen. You're right. Amen. My wife sells Tupperware. And, you know, when you're selling Tupperware, which she makes her own money now, and so she's doing real good with it. But she'll tell me, she said, I got to have this. Why have you got to have this? Well, I don't got one. <laughs> because it's come from Tupperware, I got to have it. Well, that's the way we are with things. We think we got to have all these things. I was in Nevada here not long ago, done a meeting out there, and <clears throat> before the meeting started, I had a Wednesday night free, and we went to, the, we found a church to go to, and this lady was, her, the pastor announced that this lady in the church, her daddy had passed away, and he had Bucos of tools. There was two reasons that I left Nevada without a lot of the stuff. Number one, I didn't have no money. Mm -hmm. Number two, I didn't have nowhere to put it. And I got to looking at all of that stuff as I'm walking around. So you know what? Sometimes it ain't we lusting after a man or a woman. Sometimes we're lusting after things. Amen. 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 We could all, all men could use tools. I understand that. Sometimes we may not need that. Amen. See, sometimes we waste things more than we use them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense tonight? Yes. Sir. I'm just saying, listen, hey, who should be important? God. Amen. Missions. Amen. Taking care of the church. Hey, it, it, listen, hey, I, I'm looking so forward to, to hearing great things from now to then. But you know what? Sometimes it's going, well, well I just, it ain't quite that important today. You say, why is that? We all get tired. Amen. We all get weary. Yes, sir. We all have bad days. Amen. Amen. But we got to realize to get our heart to where our heart stays on God. Amen. Amen. And stay close to God and, and stay right with God so that God's what's important to us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Amen. Psalms, he talks about over there, I believe it's Psalms 37. I don't know what verse we're off in, but he'll give us the desires. You know what your desires to be should be? God. Amen. Amen. Church. Amen. It's very easily, listen, hey, it, it, not one of us, from the preacher to down there, not one of us is exempt for messing up. That's right. Amen. You know how many preachers quit every week? You know how many churches close their doors every week? Day. You say, why is it? Not the church ain't important. Amen. Doors yes. ain't important. Amen. You're right. Brother, I hope you stay that excited. Amen. Amen. Because it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's not gonna be easy. Listen, you listen, church planning has never been easy. Amen. But we're living in days where it's really not gonna be easy. Amen. Yes, sir. But it will be worth it. Amen. We just gotta listen, make up our mind and say, okay, God's important. Amen. Yes. Hot Springs is important. Amen. Superior is important. The next town is important. Yes, when your boys go back to your places you go, God's got to be important. Amen. 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 No matter what people say, no matter what people do, you know the problem with Peter? He walked on water. At least he done something. Amen. But you know what he done? He got his eyes on the storm. That's right. He got, the, he got to being concerned about the storm. And then he sunk. So hey, make God important. And young men, I'm going to tell you, that should be your most important deal, making God important. All of you. I like watching you up here playing the fiddle 
I know y'all in Yankee land think it's a violin. It's a fiddle. Amen. <laughs> y'all from Alabama, y'all should know that. <laughs> play the guitar. Play the pianos. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you how it's got to be important. Yes, sir. Whatever is important to you is what you're going to do. Amen. 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 I'm going to say something else. You want a good you want a good woman, you want a good man? Get it from God. Amen. Amen. You say, why? Too many of us get in the wrong way. Yes, sir. And then what happens? Messes up. Amen. Amen. Just listen to that testimony of the preacher telling about how his wife met. She's supposed to be at work. Seems like it might have been God's will. Amen. But I want to say something to you. Remember one thing, girls. I don't know if y'all ever. How many ever remember two liters bottles, two two liter pops? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember three liters? Yeah. Well, what happens is your your cute boy that you're looking at, he goes from a two liter to a three liter. <laughs> Some of you catch it after a while. Amen. <laughs> Make God important, and, and listen, hey. If the, if the girl's not if, if the girl's not willing to make God important, she's not the one. If the boy's not willing to make God important, he's not the one. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Am I making sense tonight? Yes. Amen. Go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Look in verses 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. How troubled is your heart tonight? He said, not, he said let not your heart be troubled. Amen. 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 What are we troubled about tonight? We're, we're troubled about everything except what we should be troubled about. Yes, yes that's right. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good for the last two days. I haven't listened to no news. Amen. Amen. You say, why? Well, most of it's lies. Amen. You say, well, you didn't get concerned about uh, you, you pray? <coughs> I am. But I do a whole lot more pray, doing, get more effective in prayer than, and I can listen to it. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I can do more for the White House by praying than I can for worrying about it. Amen. And, and if you want to know, if you want to know anything, worrying is a sin. Yes, that's right. Right. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Amen. Did you believe in God for salvation? Yes. Amen. Then you ought to be able to believe that God can keep you safe. Amen. And God can keep you safe. Amen. And God can keep you from all harm. Right. We was in Nevada and we had to go do laundry. And I pulled up at this laundromat. I just looked up a laundromat and I went there. When we got there, there was a couple of homeless guys over there, but I didn't think nothing about it. I figured, you know, if, if anything, they might would ask for some money or something. And I took the clothes in there and, and we, we had a lot of stuff in the van. So my wife said, I'm just going to sit in the van. Y'all go take care of this. And so I did. I went and took it and put it in the laundry. And then I came back out and sat in the van and I'm Put the windows down because gas is too high to run air conditioner. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading my Bible. And all of a sudden, it was like I was in a gangster town. Cars pulling in, people getting out drunk, smoking dope, smoking cigarettes. I'm reading my Bible and this woman gets out with a can of beer and she says, what are you doing, sir? I said, I'm reading the Bible. She said, you going to preach to us? I said, don't threaten me, I might. And so my wife times the washing machine, so I go back in after it's done, and I go and take the clothes and put them in the dryer. And while I'm gone, these guys and these girls are saying things, and then I come back to the van, and my wife said, they said the last person that was here that wasn't supposed to be in this parking lot, I was supposed to be there because I was washing clothes. But he, she said, they said the last person that was here, and, and they didn't last about six minutes, and I killed them. 
Now, I don't know some other things. I can't remember all of it. And I come out, my wife tells me all of this. I've got my window down. I wasn't worried about it. I've got my Bible back out and read. Amen. I mean, they're gangsters out there. I don't know what they're going to do to me. i got six minutes left to live, and then I'm going to die. Amen. Which I just tell people, don't threaten me with heaven. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. I didn't pray. I read my Bible. Maybe I should have prayed. I don't know. And with just within six minutes, the whole crowd left. The homeless people left. The guys and women that pulled in with their beers and their stove and stuff, they disappeared. You say, what was it? I knew who I served. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we know who God is. We know what God can do, and we're not going to. I wasn't going to pull out of that. I had clothes I was drying. I, listen, man, I can't go to the Goodwill and buy clothes every day. So you say, what do you say? I wasn't scared. You say, what? I knew God had me. Amen. If I'd have been scared, my doors would have been locked, my windows would have been up, my boy would not have been sitting in the laundry mat watch, watching the clothes or sitting there. He'd have been in the van with me locked up. I had my window down, read my mind. Amen. You say, what? Well, I wasn't troubled. I know who I serve. I know how big God is. Amen. Don't worry about your finances. You say, what? Well, God's got it. Amen. 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 I don't know how much that pizza costs today, but I'm going to tell you right now. Where's the glutton at? Right here, <laughs> we wouldn't have had to buy so much pizza, but he wanted the glutton today. Amen. Amen. God's got this. Amen. Amen. Give it to God. Amen. Now, you know what? Listen, I ain't going to say don't be concerned and don't run up there and start a church without getting some things in order. Amen. 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 But I'm going to tell you right now. I think God would, I think it would be God's perfect will. And if it's God's perfect will, guess what? All the funds will come in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, this is not our work, right? Yeah. I'm not the one that died on the cross. I'm not the one that shed my blood. I'm not the one that left the perfect place. It was Jesus. And Jesus came to save sinners. He came to seek sinners. He came to encourage saints. He came to heal people. Amen. He came to help people. And I'm going to tell you right now, I think he still wants it done in 2022. Amen. Amen. Don't be weary. Be not weary. Don't be not troubled. Believe in God. It'll all be all right. Amen. Yes, amen. You boys, you're going to go home in a few days. Then they can't get rid of you. I mean, that's that's going to be an issue. Now they throw you in the river or something. <laughs> It'll be scary. You're going right back into the world. But I can tell you something. You serve the same God as Apostle Paul. Amen. amen. That's right. Amen. Some of you are going through some heartaches and troubles and disappointments. Let me just say, say something to you. Give it to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It'll make life a whole lot easier. <laughs> make things a whole lot easier on you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. No, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Nah. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And look in verses 7. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. How cheerful are you whenever you put money in offer? Amen. Amen. Hmm? How cheerful are you? Are you happy about it? Are you happy that you can? Yes. yes. Are you glad that you can give? But I'm going to say something to you. God loves a cheerful giver. Gary loves any kind of giver. <laughs> Oliver B. Green, I don't know if he did his but he probably has. He used to go up to Pennsylvania and set up gospel tents. And, uh, you know, and he dealt with some Catholics, like some around here or whatever, but he dealt with some Catholics, and they would literally come under the gospel tent where Oliver B. Green preached. And he got to talking or whatever, and he, he said one time, he said, listen, hey, he said, if you don't like what I'm saying, you don't like what's going on around here, go back to the usher whenever you get, to, right before you pull out of the parking lot and ask for your money back. You can have it. We ought to give cheerful. Amen. 
Do you know it blesses God when he gets to bless us? Yes, sir. It makes God happy when God can say, hey, they are doing right. They're doing great. They're doing things like I want them to do. They're doing it for the right reasons. They're glad they can do it. Amen. And I believe y'all like what you're doing. But I'm going to tell you something. Next year at this time, it might be different. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. Be happy when you do that. Yes, amen. Now, I want to be honest with you. Whenever God told me, when I the first time I ever went to Maine, and God told me to give my last fifty dollars, I wasn't too happy. <laughs> but I realized that God knew what He was doing, and I give it. Amen. And you know what? He gave me back more than what I gave. Amen. Every time that happens. Amen. I said it last night. I may say it every night. You can't yet give God. You can't outgive him. You say, how do you know? I've tried it. When you give everything, that's trying God. Yes, sir. When you listen, hey, when you know what you've got to do, what you the way it's going. I mean, my wife got my first granddaughter. And as soon as my wife found out that we was having a grandchild, she says, I gotta start buying her. Mm -hmm. I mean, that we we out west, we're up north, we're down south, wherever. And she's like, don't you think Ruth needs this? Don't you think I need to buy this for the baby? And now she's in North Carolina. And listen, I, I'm telling you right now, this doctor's appointment's really killing me. Because <laughs> they had my, my son and my future daughter-in-law's, uh, uh, whatever that thing is, they, when they give him, give him things or whatever, the wedding shower or whatever. I, don't, I didn't see them making no showers. I didn't get no pictures of them showering. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all get to that after a while. <laughs> but she enjoys doing things for people. Amen. Amen. And I told her, I said, I got seven children. If all of them decide to get married and start having grandchildren, listen, I'm going to have to preach in Methodist churches, <laughs> Pentecostal churches, holiness churches, because the Baptists ain't got enough money. Amen. Hey, do it cheerfully. Amen. When the offering plate comes by, smile. Hey. He loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Now listen, he'll bless you either way, but he blesses you more when you do it right. Amen. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, look at verses 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto, not a, not unto men. men. Who are you doing this for? Missions? Coming to church? Singing? Toby thought I didn't know how to sing tonight, so he gave me a song the other day. He wanted me to get the words right, I guess. Why are you doing it? Amen. Why do you knock on doors? Why do you get excited for Jesus? Why? Who are you doing it for? See, we got a lot of people doing it. We, me and the preacher was talking today. We got a lot of preachers today that are doing it because that's just the way they think it should be. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be in the ministry. No, I've got a calling in the ministry. Yes, amen. Amen. Now, you know, if you go to these, you go, you go to some churches and you, and listen, hey, all you got to do is become real liberal and you can get real rich. Amen. That's right. I'm not, I, I listen, I'm not planning on selling out. Yes, sir. Not for goods. You say, why? Because God's got more. Mm -hmm. See, I used to work for a radio station. And when I was travel out, they gave me a credit card and they took good care of me. But you ain't gonna believe this. Whenever I chose, uh, whenever the Lord started calling calling me into full time evangelism, so I had to leave the radio station. They wanted their credit card back. I can't figure that. I can't figure that out why. Do you know what? God's credit card is a whole lot bigger. Amen. Amen. I I, I look back sometimes. But when I think about finances, my finances and God's finances don't work. 
When my wife does my taxes every year and she gets out the paperwork and I give her, because I write it on my thing, and I give her how much I've made for that year and then she tells me how much I spent and how much went this way and how much went that way and then whenever it comes back, I'm in the red. Amen. But then I go to look into the spiritual eyes of the finances and I'm in the green. Amen. You say, why is that? Because see, God blesses what we do right. Yes, amen. And the way that we're supposed to do it. Now, you know, maybe some people say, well, I say this too much. I'd rather, I'd rather be in North Carolina with my wife. That's right. But I know where I'm supposed to be. Amen. Yes, sir. And so what I have to do is to sacrifice and say, God, you know best. And continue. Amen. amen. Oh, I could go back home and God would take plenty of care of me. But I'd be doing it because of my wife. And I do believe I do believe a man should take care of his wife. Amen. Amen. And if things was to get too bad, I will go home. And anybody don't understand it, it ain't gonna bother me. Amen. Amen. God's got too much for me to do for me to worry about what people think. Amen. But let's let, let's Amen. hey, we got to do it for the right reasons. Not hey, I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church. Amen. I don't have to sing the songs of Zion. I get to sing the songs of Zion. I did not. Hey, Brother J Junior, what's your name? You know what your name is? Amen. Listen, if you don't know it, you don't need to ask me. He didn't tell me I had to go. I got to go. Amen. Amen. I got to knock on doors. I like knocking on doors. You say, why? Because you get a lot of crazy answers. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Keith liked to go to some of them doors that I wasn't going to. Amen? Amen. He's a whole lot more spiritual than I am. If he says don't come, if he says no trespassing, listen, hey, they put on there, I don't want nothing to do with it, I'm not interested, let them do what they want to. Now, when they put no soliciting, it's a little bit different because I'm not selling that. That's right. Amen. Amen. We had some people in Arizona last year tell us, told the told young man, you can't be soliciting on the property. Now, this young man just got saved. He's only been saved for about two years. I said, and I said, brother, you can tell him whatever you want to tell him. I said, but we're not soliciting. Soliciting is selling things. Amen. I'm not selling the gospel track. I wasn't selling this survey. Amen. 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 Let's keep it in our heart that we're doing it for God. Amen. Yes, amen. Because that's who it's all about. Amen. Amen. Go to 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, look at verses 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What about this? Do you love what you do? How much love, how much love was in what we've done today? Hmm? You know what? It's easy to love for those people that was interested. Amen. Amen. But those that wasn't interested, it's sometimes a little hard to love them. Okay. You know what? They, they need a little bit more love. Amen. Yes, sir. They need somebody to really love them and somebody to really pray for them. Amen? Amen. Amen. They need to really love them. You know what? God don't look at when you say you love God. God looks at your actions. Yes, sir. Amen. How you act in what you do. I just got done reading Jonah either today or yesterday. You know what? Jonah wasn't acting like a missionary. Amen. Sometimes I don't act like an evangelist. Amen. Brother Junior probably don't always act like a pastor. Yep. <clears throat> hey, boy! <laughs> you say, why? We're human. Amen. People hurt our feelings. Yes, sir. You say, I knew nobody ever hurt my feelings. Liar. Yeah. <laughs> He ain't never told the truth, probably. Yeah. Amen. Jesus got his feelings hurt. Yes, he did. Huh? But hey, why are we doing it? And how much love is put in it? Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I used Jude chapter, Jude, uh, Jude chapter 1. I used Jude verses 22 last night about having compassion and love. Of compassion and making a difference. We've got to have love with that. Amen. Amen. We've got to have compassion. Right. Because I'm going to let you know something. Serving God, and you already know this, but serving God is not easy. Amen. Right. Sure, sir. But here you, you remember? Today, 
those that told us to leave the property, those that was not interested, guess who they rejected? Right. Jesus. They didn't reject me. You say, what? All I was doing was trying to find out if they was interested in church. All I was trying to do is find out if they, we, could, we could try to figure out whether they're going to heaven or hell. Amen. You know what one of them told me today? I said, what about Jesus? What if, what if the rapture takes place? What if the, the Lord comes today? What are you going to do? Well, he said, you'll have to go ask somebody else where I'm going. I tried to tell him, but he wasn't interested. Amen. You know, he, he rejected it. He rejected Christ. Amen. And I have to love him. Mm -hmm. The Bible says to love those that despitefully use us. Yes. Those are enemies. Amen. 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 And you know what? I just read it today or yesterday. G you know what? Jesus said they hated me. And if you're going to stand for right and you're going to do right, guess what? They're going to hate us. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. So listen. we got to live. It ain't easy. That's right. It's very easy for me to love Lighthouse Baptist Church. You say, well, what little bit of time I do get to spend at the cabin. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Nice place. Nice bed. But you know what? I am to love those people. Amen. But I'm also to love those that harm me. Amen. Those, those that say, man, you're crazy. You shouldn't be out here doing this. Amen. Amen. I don't know which one of y'all boys love the devil, but you need to hate him. Amen. You get that after a while. Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Romans chapter 10. And, uh, brother, you didn't set it to altar like you were supposed to tonight. Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 10, verses 9. That, I, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus in your home? Amen. It's hard to preach a missions conference and not have a little bit of salvation. Amen. 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 Hey. What little bit I've talked to some of you, I believe some of you might be saved. <laughs> but I don't know that. Amen. You say, why? I wouldn't know. Amen. I've heard some of the testimonies from last night till today. I've heard those things. But see, you need to act like you're saved. Yes. Yes. You know what I tell my children? Because I got some that's not doing exactly right. Mm. I said, if you want me to preach you into heaven, then you're going to have to live like you're going to heaven. Amen. Because if you don't live like you're going to heaven, I'm not going to get behind a pulpit. I'm not going to get in front of a bunch of people. I'm not going to get in front of family and enemies, amen, and say, well, we know all these things are good and they're in heaven. I'm not going to do that. Amen. I'm not going to lie for people. Amen. 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 As Carl Lack used to say, if you can go live it on Saturday night, I can name it on Sunday morning. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But we need to make sure, listen, we need to make sure that Jesus Christ is inside of us. You say, why? That's the most important thing. Amen. Amen. Listen, hey, starting a church up yonder is a good thing, but if you ain't saved, it's a bad thing. Amen, sir. There's a lot of there's a lot of church, there's a lot of people in a lot of Baptist churches ain't saved. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. I don't know if I ever told this story. Brother Sammy Allen was preaching in a church in North Carolina some years ago. And I lived in South Carolina. We was, we was about an hour and a half away. And our church got together. We got the church band. And we drove all the way up to here. And I knew the preacher. They used to support my daddy when he was in missions. Uh, my, my couple of my siblings went to school there for a little bit. I knew the preacher. I knew his wife. She acted like a good woman. She acted like a preacher's wife. She was in church. She was a faithful wife to her husband. You know what? That night, she realized she was on her way to hell and got saved. Amen. Amen. About three or four years ago, I got a text. I was in a group text, and I got a text from this guy saying a Baptist preacher got saved. Man, it made me happy. Amen. I think preachers ought to be saved. Their wives ought to be saved. Their children ought to be saved. And the congregation ought to be saved. Amen. Amen. Amen? You know, you can tell people you're Baptist and there's nothing wrong with that because you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You should be ashamed of a lot of them. Maybe in it. But not the uh, the history of Baptists and being a Baptist. The 
man just ain't getting me to heaven. Amen. What's getting me to heaven is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you hear that mostly in a good Baptist church. Amen. Make sure you're saved. Yes, sir. Make sure your heart's right with God. Yes, sir. We need to be right with God. You say, why? We're all going to stand before God. Yes, sir. Before we go to heaven, guess what? There's a judgment. Amen. It's appointed unto man, woman, boy, and girl to die. Yes, sir. And then it's appointed to judgment. Amen? Amen. You see, we got to be right. we got to have our heart right. Or it's not going to be pretty. Amen? Every idle word. Amen. Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess. Hey, we better do it now. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, I, had, I heard a preacher say this, and I use this a whole lot now. He said, when we get to the judgment, we're going to find, and I'm talking about a good Bible believer, we're going to find out we didn't have it all together. Yes, sir. I'm just going to tell you, I'm, I, I, I'm going to tell you why we're, where we're at today. Is because when people, and I'm talking about people that use the King James Bible, when they read it, they don't have an open heart, an open mind, and open thinking. If you don't think thinking matters when you're reading the Bible, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. It does matter. Amen. Because you need to be thinking about what you're reading. Amen. I'm not reading the funny books. I'm not reading the funny paper. I'm not reading the, the, the three little pigs. I'm reading the Bible. And it ought to mean something to it. Yes, sir. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll have an open mind and an open heart and open thinking, you'll be better off. Amen. You get it closer to being right. Does that make sense? Amen. You'd have it most better to get when you're reading that Bible. It Listen, all things, listen, hey, it's just like coming to church. You don't come to church with wondering what you're having for dinner. Amen. Amen. You come to church to say, God, I'm coming. The preacher's going to have a message, and I need to have open hearts. I need to not be thinking about dinner or supper or work. I need to be thinking about what you want for me to do with what he preaches. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Okay. Amen. Sure. Well, where is our heart tonight? Amen. It's weak. We've got to keep it right with God. And it's not always easy to do that. You know, it's a whole lot easier to feed the flesh than it is the spirit. Amen. 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 It'd be a whole lot easier to just sit there and watch the boot tube than read the Bible. Amen. Amen. It'd be a whole lot easier to sit there and watch the boot tube. You say, why? It don't take no energy. Right. Other than your thumb. you got to mash that button to get it to the next channel. Amen. Mm -hmm. Where's your heart tonight? Is it with God, with the flesh, with the world, or is the devil got God? Amen? Amen. You say, okay, I, we're, we're good right now. Yeah, but we got to stay that way. Amen. It's an everyday thing. Paul said to crucify our flesh daily. Amen. And without contradicting the Bible, sometimes I have to do it more than one time. That's right. Amen? Amen. That's the reason. You know what? That's the reason I don't like listening to the news. It makes me mad. Amen. And when I get mad, you know where I'm at? In the flesh. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, sir. And I ain't thinking about church, and I ain't thinking about a message, and I ain't thinking about what I'm supposed to be thinking about, and I ain't worried about people going to hell. Amen. You say, well, I'm worried about what the news got to say. Yes, sir. I'm not going to say you shouldn't keep up with somewhat of it, but I don't think we should watch as much as we watch. Amen. I don't think we should listen to as much as we listen to. Amen. The preacher was interviewed and handed something here. You know what? You know, and I'm not telling him what to do. That's between him and God. The best thing for him to do is let that thing sit there until after the meeting. You say, why? Because the devil will fester. Amen. And he'll forget about it. I mean, he'll, he'll get over his joy. Yes, sir. You say, why? Because we've got a lot of negative people in America. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm a Christian. But preacher, you better listen to what I've got to say. Amen. No, we better listen to what God got to say. Amen. Yes, yes, sir. Through the word and the preaching of the word of God, we better listen to Well, why? We're wicked people. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Some preachers just think they're it. Yes. I know where I'm from. I know where I come from. Mm -hmm. I know what I am. 
Amen. I tell sometimes, I said, I wouldn't go across the road to hear this preacher. I wouldn't go across the road to hear myself sometime. I wonder. Amen. Amen. You say, why? I know myself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, that's what, like I said, whenever I, I don't like to hear things about people, you say, why? I know what the flesh is. Amen. I know what the devil is. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. And he's real. Yes, sir. So tonight, hey, make sure your heart's right with God. Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Bless, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> up here at the altar now. Let's do that. We don't always have an altar call on a testimony missions conference. But why don't we take a minute and pray specifically about Hot Springs? To pray specifically and ask God's direction where He wants us to go. And at the same time, I told you guys last night we take up a love offering tonight for um, the tires for the evangelist car. Pray about that too if you haven't already. And say, God, what do you want me to give?